Hey folks, Ryan here, and welcome back to the reading room. This week, we're going to take a look at a dog presenting with neck pain. So first up, our signament and our history. This is a one-year-old female mixed breed dog presenting with a two-week history of neck pain. Important considerations for this case, just like any of our radiographs that we're taking, are that we use collimated radiographs to our region of interest, and we should try to use sedation for our patients to minimize the amount of radiation exposure to ourselves, we're minimizing the number of retakes that we need to take, as well as improve the quality of images that we're acquiring. So let's take a look. We've got these nicely collimated radiographs localized to the cervical spine. We've got a ventrodorsal projection on our left and a lateral projection on our right. When we look at these images, the first thing that jumps out at me is the irregular margins of the end plates at C4-5. So if we're looking here, we can see that at the level of C4-5, there's a regularity of the margins of the end plates. There are these concave lucencies in the margins, and we can confirm this in both our lateral and our ventrodorsal projection where there's this irregularity localized right here. I notice a similar but less severe change at the craniodorsal aspect of C6. So you've got this concave lucency right here, and similarly in the lateral projection, this rounded lucency right here. Are there any other findings that we should pay attention to? Well, there are a couple of incidental features. One, there's some spondylosis deformans, some smooth bone proliferation, ventral to C2-3, ventral to C4-5, where we also have these concave lucencies, so this new bone proliferation ventrally, and then a mild amount at C3-4 here. So again, our findings are these concave lucencies at C4-5 and the craniodorsal aspect of C6, and this smooth ventral bone proliferation at C2-3, C3-4, and C4-5. So our conclusions for that are discospondylitis for those concave lucencies and spondylosis deformans for our more smooth ventral bone proliferation. These are really similar words, but are actually very different disease processes. Discospondylitis is an infectious process that often results in clinical signs. The patients are painful or might present with neurologic deficits. And one of the hallmarks of this disease, when we look at it radiographically, is lysis of the end plates. And that's what we're seeing in these radiographs. We're seeing loss of bone. This is lysis associated with the infection, which starts at the intervertebral disc, spreads into the adjacent vertebrae, and affects those end plates. And this is what we end up seeing in discospondylitis. And we're seeing it at two sites here, C4-5 and C5-6, but the only lesion at C5-6 is in that C6 vertebral body. When we're evaluating patients with discospondylitis, oftentimes it's helpful to do an MRI for further evaluation, which we actually did in this patient. So this is a T1 weighted image. It's one of the types of MRI images that we can get. And this is the type of image that we can get with contrast medium administration as well, which is what we've done in this instance. I've kind of matched it up here so that we can see C2 on radiographs and C2 here on the MRI. This is a mid-sagittal slice at the level of these disc spaces. And here we've got this region of hyperintensity, so this bright area at the dorsal aspect of this intervertebral disc space, and similarly, but less severely, at the one more call to it, these are the same lesions matched up, but how they appear in different imaging modalities. And so this contrast enhancement is, again, a real characteristic feature of discospondylitis. If this patient came to a neurologist or an, a radiologist for an MRI, this is the kind of image that we would end up getting, and this helps us confirm that it is discospondylitis though the radiographic findings themselves are quite conclusive. So this is an example again, discospondylitis in a dog, looking for those concave lucencies in the end plates, that end plate irregularity and lysis. Those are the hallmark features of this disease, and we shouldn't confuse it with that smooth ventral bone proliferation, which is known as spondylosis deformans. So I hope this helps, and especially when the next patient comes in with neck pain.